Welcome to our segment on basic MIDI editing. When you press a key on your keyboard, a MIDI event gets recorded. Each of the black bars right here represent a separate MIDI event. MIDI events are always placed inside a container called MIDI parts. You can cut MIDI parts using the split tool. You move them around. You can resize them. Drag the corners. Glue the parts together. If MIDI parts overlap, unlike audio parts, you can still hear the MIDI parts underneath. Cubase SX users can use the In Place MIDI Editor, which is accessible under MIDI, Edit In Place, or simply by clicking on this button. Click here. This brings up the In Place Editor toolbar. I'm going to work in the key editor. This provides most of the functions of the In Place Editor. Select the MIDI parts, and then select MIDI, open key editor, or you can simply double click on the MIDI part. Under File, Preferences, MIDI, you can change the default edit action, and as a result, Double clicking on the MIDI part will open one of these four editors. If you, like I did, selected a few MIDI parts, use this drop down menu to switch between the parts. If you don't see the parts list drop down menu, right click on your toolbar and select it Parts List. Activating the Edit Active Part Only lets you restrict editing to the currently active part only. On the left side, you can see the piano keyboard, and this can be moved up and, and down. You can select one or a few notes and change their position. To move notes only vertically or horizontally, press and hold the control key. To hear the notes, their sound, the acoustic feedback button should be active. You can draw notes using the pen tool. To resize notes, use object selection or the draw tool. To erase notes, you use the erase tool. To mute notes, use the mute tool. To cut notes, use the split tool. To glue notes together, you'd use the glue gun. Using these handles, you can trim the beginning and end of the part. Using these scroll bars, you can zoom vertically and horizontally. Or, you can use the H and G keys on your keyboard. More zoom functions are available under Edit and Zoom.
As we already s saw, we can move notes using the mouse. Now let's check a few more methods for moving and transposing notes. And let's start with a transpose palette. Use, select your note, use these two arrows to move the note one semitone up or down, and these two arrows here to move the notes up and down by an octave. You can also use the up and down arrows on your keyboard to move notes by a semitone. If you press the shift key while using the up and down arrow notes, you will move the notes by an octave. Click on the show info button and under pitch you can type the note value and press enter or hold the alt key and use the pop-up fader. Select the notes, go edit, move to cursor. You can also use the move buttons in the nudge palette. These will move notes by their current value in the quantize drop down menu. Another way to transpose notes can be found under the MIDI menu. Select your note or notes, select MIDI, transpose, make your desirable selection and click OK. Let's check a few ways to draw and copy notes now. You can create interesting sounds by drawing notes with the line tool. Select one of the options from the Line Tool drop-down menu and draw your notes. Select your notes, hold the Alt key, and then copy the notes to their new positions. You can also use the repeat and duplicate functions from the Edit menu on your toolbar. Or you can also select the notes, hold the Alt key, grab the right edge of the last note, and drag it. The bottom of the key editor shows us the controller line. Right-click, Create New Controller Line. From this pop-up menu, you can select the number of event types, Extra Event Types can be found in the Controller menu Setup dialog window. To edit a value in the controller line, use your draw and line tools.
you can use the Erase and Mute tools as well. The current controller value is displayed in this window. To move events, click the Object Selection tool, hold the Control key, and make your selection. Keep holding the Control key and move the selection. If you hold both the Control and Alt keys at the same time, you can copy your event. If your piano skills are not very good, you can use Step Recording. Activate the Step Recording button. From the drop-down menu, select the note spacing and length. For example, I will set our quantize to 1 fourth and the length to the eighth. Choose which parameters you want to record. Pitch, on and off, velocity. Choose your start position with a left click and this blue line indicates your start position. Now let's record something. If you activate insert mode all notes to the right of the blue line will move to the right. You can edit your notes using a MIDI input. Select the notes you want to replace. Activate MIDI input. Play the notes on your MIDI instrument. We already know how to apply the quantize function during MIDI recording. Now let's check how we can apply this function to notes which have been recorded already. From the quantize drop down menu, choose Setup. From the drop-down menu, here, choose the desirable grid settings, in my case, 1 fourth for grid quantize, straight type for type. The swing slider lets you offset the position of every second bar in the grid. Tuplets lets you divide the grid into smaller segments. The magnetic area lets you specify the area where the notes are going to be affected. As you can see, when I move the slider around, the area around the grid lines changes. You can store and remove presets. Stored presets are available from the Quantize drop-down menu. Non-quantize allows you to specify an area around the grid bars that's not going to be affected by the quantize function. This is how you give your MIDI music a human touch. Random quantize also helps to avoid that mechanical feeling. Iterative strength, if set, can be applied from the MIDI menu. 
iterative quantize. Basically, it works like this. For example, it's now set at 60%. This means that when the function is applied, notes will be moved only 60% of the distance to the closest quantize grid position. The move controller does exactly what it sounds like. It moves the controllers related to notes. Now you can apply quantize by pressing this button. The auto option is used to apply changes in real time. For example, adjusting settings during auditioning a segment. I'm going to go over a few other ways to apply quantization. Select your notes. Select MIDI. Over quantize. Undo quantize. This allows you to move notes back to their original positions. This function is separate from the history under edit history. It can be used if the freeze quantize function has not been applied yet. And this concludes our segment on basic MIDI editing.